Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. It's Wendy Lee. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the US and I'm excited that you're joining me today for a little bit of crafting fun. All right, so let me make sure that I am in the right place on Facebook. Great. I got my little notification that says I'm live, but let's just see. Okay double checking. So what we'll be creating today, we are going to make a super cool slider gate fold card. So I learned this technique this weekend. We had our um, Makers Mojo event this weekend, and it was so much fun. So one of the classes that Melissa Kerman taught, she showed us this cool fun fold, and I decided to call it a slider gate fold, and I'm going to teach that to you today. Hey, Glenda. Hey, Gwen. Hi, Lise. So glad you guys are here. Kay. Oh, good. Yes. Happy, happy Tuesday. So glad you guys are here with me today. Um, as always, I will try to keep up with comments, but you know that I get distracted easily. So I will go back and make sure that I check all comments. So if you've got questions on anything, be sure to leave me a note. And um, if you're enjoying the content, please give me a thumbs up, um, share it with your crafty friends. I would appreciate that as well. All right, let's dive in. What are we doing? So we are featuring the Snailed It stamp set and coordinating dies. And then we're making this super cool card here. And you can in the screen. Um, and then this slides up and comes off. And then the card opens. Cool. So why am I featuring the Snailed It bundle? Well, you might have noticed that my friend Glenda Mollett and I, um, hopefully Glenda, I'm saying your name right, um, are partnering together and we are doing a, a Happy Mail stamp camp. So it will feature these same products that I'm using today or some of the same products I'm using today. And it's very exciting. And if you hold out to the end, then maybe I'll show you a sneak peek of one of the cards from class, our upcoming class. All right, so let me go ahead and switch the camera over and let's get started. All right, let's make sure I got it. Yay, okay. Hey, Tammy, so glad you're here. Mary, Mary again. <laughs> I know too many Marys right now. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> all right. So again, I'm going to show you, we are using the Snailed It Stamp Set and Coordinating Dies. And love, 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 love. It's funny because when I first saw this, I, I really was not all that excited about it. But I got to tell you, it's really cute and so much fun to play with. So I'm going to show you this again. So this slides off and then the card opens. Cute. All right, so let's start with the card inside. I'm going to move that out of the way. So we'll bring in our trimmer. You could use your Simply Scored for this as well, but since my trimmer's handy, I'm gonna bring it in. And I'm bringing in my card base, which is eight and a half by five and a half. And I'm gonna score it on both ends in at two and one eighth of an inch. Get that, I'm gonna rotate it and score in from the other end as well. That way I can ensure my sides are the same. All right, we'll move this bad boy out of our way. I'm gonna bring in my bone folder and give these a really nice crease. Do both sides, because I want this to lay nice and flat. So you can get a good crease in there in the beginning. It really is helpful. Okay, that's looking pretty darn good. So let's start with the end side of our card. That way, once I make the mechanism, um, it will be good to go and I won't have to open it back up. Isn't that terrible? I'm being lazy. All right, I'm gonna stamp my sentiment in basic gray ink. So I'm gonna pull that out. And I've got this little hello, so cute. And I'm just gonna use my block to line that up and hopefully it's somewhat straight, yay. I like it when I get lucky and everything turns out nice. Yay. Hey, Kathy, so glad you're here. Thank you for sharing, I love that. I very much appreciate that. Supporting me, I, it's very nice. 
All right, next I'm going to bring in Rio Red and I'm going to stamp this super cute little heart. I love it. And we're going to do that a couple of times. Oh, so simple and cute. All right, we'll put that ink away before I get it all over me. All right, so let's go ahead and adhere this right inside our card base. Great. So I'm just going to center it best that I can, left to right, top to bottom. Great. All right, now we're ready to decorate the front. So I've got two strips of designer series paper. Um, I believe it's two inches by five and three eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere those to the card to front. Make sure I'm right side up. Yes. <laughs> this is directional paper, which means the print does have a uh, top and bottom to it. So you got to kind of have to watch that a little bit. I don't know about you, but uh, oh no, always, always happens when you're doing a video, right? Good grief. Good thing I have another one on the other side of the room. This is why I have multiples going. Well, maybe not why, but I'm glad I have multiples going. <laughs> Uh, but yes, I'm sure that you guys have done it. Well, maybe you haven't. Maybe it's just me. But I have many a time accidentally put things upside down. So, okay. Thanks for sharing as well. I very much appreciate that. All right. So next thing we're going to do is I've got a piece of real red cardstock. And I probably don't remember the measurements on this. Let's see. Three and a half by one and three quarters. And then my designer series paper is three and three eighths by one and five eighths. And we're gonna go ahead and adhere this down. Because I'm dealing with eighths of an inches, when it went to cut this in half, I was dealing with sixteenths. And I was like, hmm, while I don't have an issue with that, I think a lot of people struggle with that. So I'm gonna adhere these together. I'm gonna to bring my paper trimmer back in. I'm gonna cut this in half. So half of three and a half is I think one and three quarters, hopefully that's correct. And I'm gonna cut through both layers. That way I didn't have to deal with a sixteenth of an inch when I'm measuring my designer series paper. Yay, hopefully that makes you happy that I did it that way. You always cut the directional paper wrong, Kathy. I know, it. every time I think I know what I want, I that's not what I end up wanting to do. So yeah, I prefer paper not to be directional personally but I'm not the designer of all the paper at Stampin' Up. So if I were, we would not have directional paper, I don't think. This particular pack has lots of directional paper in it, but it's so cute, just so cute. Oh, what am I doing? I am not tilting my uh, adhesive correctly when I'm ending. All right, so I'm laying those down and I'm just butting them together and just right along that edge there. Looks like it's supposed to be there maybe, right? All right, so let's make the mechanism. So the card base itself is done, ready to go. So we're ready to make our mechanism. So I've already die cut three of this shape out of Bermuda Bay. And so let me show you the die for that one. So in our dies, it's this one right here. I love this. It's like a square version of the postage stamp uh, punch. So it's got that really cool edge on it. So what I did was I've already scored these two in half. So let me bring in my bone folder. So I'm gonna fold these two just right in half and give them a really good crease. All right, great. So I've got that. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my silicone mat because I'm gonna get a little messy, I think. I'm gonna be working with liquid adhesive. Oh, it makes me crazy sometimes. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip this over to the back and I'm gonna adhere one of these. Oh, I folded them the wrong way. I wanted them right sides out. So let me, let me fix that. Let me do another nice crease. I want the stitching to be pretty on the outside, not the inside. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adhere these to this open square here that doesn't have the crease in it, each half. And I'm gonna use liquid adhesive because it'll give me a little bit of leeway in case I need to shift it. But I don't wanna to go too much because I don't want it to glob out on me, if you know what I mean by that. 
So we'll go ahead and get this lined up. Push that down. All right, let's do the same thing on the other side. Give it a little bit of liquid adhesive. I might've gone a little excessive. And we'll get this one down as well. So hopefully they'll line up with those two folds butted up together. And if not, because I use liquid adhesive, I have a moment that I can slide those. Perfect. <laughs> Mary McKay, yes, I don't think I can know too many Marys either. Right now I know several Marys. So that, that's kind of awesome. <laughs> okay. All right, so that is the base of my mechanism. So this is the part that's going to slide in and out to close my gatefold. Now I wanna decorate this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of the way. I'll, I'll, I'll probably pull it right back in in a moment, but I've got a little white square and I'm gonna dimension it right on top of this. Whoops, oh, I should mention, this is not totally square, this die. So it does have a longer side. Let me turn it so you can see. There's a longer side and a narrower side. So there is a direction to this as well. So this is why I laid my square down. I was like, wait, it's cut wrong. No, because it's not a square, a true square. All right, let's pull in some dimensionals and we'll plop some on here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put four. That might be a lot, but um, I think it'll be nice. I want it to be nice and sturdy. Okay. Now, when I lay this down, I'm not going to push this all the way flat because I do want a little bit of height. I know that doesn't make any sense. I want this to stick up just a smidge when you're seeing it from the top versus pushing it flat. It'll be easier for me to get the slider on and off the card. All right. Cute, 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 cute. All right. Let's, oh, you know what I forgot to do? All right, I'm pulling this off. I had my twine underneath this white layer. So let's see if I can get this off. Maybe I'll get lucky. Woohoo! You know, I did this when I made the original sample too, same mistake, but I um, was too far gone. So I actually had to fish the twine through the layers. That's not fun. I don't like doing that. All right, so I've got some of the snail mail twine and I'm using the blushing bright. Let's go ahead and bring our silicone craft sheet back in. That way I don't stick this to my table. <laughs> and it kind of holds it in place for me. So even better, I like that. A nice little um, bonus. All right, so I'm just gonna tie a little bow. My hands are being a little weird today arthritis, I guess. All right, we'll clip that off. I'm gonna leave those a little longer than I might normally um, because I think it's kind of a fun, fun little tie on there. All right, now let's do this again and we will put this back on here. I'm gonna give that a good push. And then on this other side, like I said, I want that to stick up just a smidge so I'm not gonna push it all the way flat. I'm gonna see if I can, well, we'll see what happens. Well, it sort of worked, it sort of didn't. I think it'll still be fabulous. All right, so let's decorate the front of this. So next, pulling back in my dies, maybe. I already die cut this, but I've got this die right here and this makes this super cute envelope. Oh my gosh, it's so stinking cute. I love it. All right, so we're gonna fold. So it adds all this great stitch detail and it gives you score lines to fold on. How wonderful is that? All right, so I'm gonna give it a good, good crease on my two sides and then the bottom that I'm gonna fold up. All right, now, so that'll fold like that. But before I go there, I want to go ahead and I already did this as well. I die cut a piece of Whisper White with this little um, image here, which also gives you your wonderful stitch detail. 
Um, so that's like a little letter. And then the heart right from the dies as well. So cute. So we're gonna go ahead and glue this heart right onto our letter. I don't wanna go crazy with adhesive. And I think I'm gonna angle it ever so slightly. Okay. Then I want to go ahead and pop a couple dimensionals on the back of this letter and put it in my envelope. And I'm just gonna lay this up here to kind of look and see what I want my placement to be. I want it kind of peeking out. Oh, my heart didn't stick, did it? That's what happens with liquid glue. One of the reasons I don't love it. Okay, so now my, my little um, letter is down in. I think it, it needs to go down in just a smidge more because did you see I didn't have it, the bottom of it covered. Oh, it might be too late. I'm going to tear it. Oh, the heart went flying across the room. <laughs> Too funny. All right, we'll put that back on. It didn't go so far that I couldn't reach it. Good thing. And I think my adhesive is still good. So here's what I'm going to do so that I don't make this same mistake again. I'm going to kind of play with where those are. Because I do want this to be covered on this bottom. Okay, happier with that. All right. I'll go with that. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of liquid adhesive on the back of this one. And on the back of this one, and we'll fold those over. And then a little bit more here. Now I'm going to hold that for just a moment. Might have been better to use something other than liquid adhesive. But I'm just going to hold that for a second until it sets up a little bit. Yeah, I think that's going to hold it. So now I've got a little bit of, of depth that um, letter in there. So it's not so flat looking, which I really like. And then we can glue this right on the front here. Now, if you want to dimension this on, you can. I'm going to use liquid adhesive again. You could use stamp and seal if you prefer. I'm doing this so that I have a little leeway um, in case I'm not happy with where I place it. All right, and we're going to hold that for a moment while we let our glue set. So yeah, so I hope you guys check out. I put a link to the um, stamp camp that Glenda and I are doing together. It's going to be eight projects. Um, product comes with the kit. It's awesome. And this time we're doing video tutorials. So there's not going to be a written tutorial. The videos will have the complete supply list and cut dimensions, but there will be no written uh, tutorial. We're going to do videos this time, which is kind of fun, right? All right. I am pulling in the resin hearts. So cute. I'm going to add a little heart right here on the corner. And then this is ready to just slide right over my card. So let's see if I can get it to work. So you kind of have to lift this up a little bit and slide slide the openings under each side of it. Well, I say I say that it's easier said than done, right? And this um, shape that I picked is not the easiest to slide on either. Once I get it the first time, I'm good. Okay, perfect. And then we'll slide this down over our edge. Well, we, maybe we will. You do need to get the edges if you add uh, extra layers down really good. There we go. All right. All right. It looks like I've got, it needs a little more gap in the middle. So that's one thing about this is that the um, slider is going to take up some room because you've got two layers of cardstock and a fold there. So as you saw, I just went back and kind of recreased my sides so that it would sit properly. Now it's going to be raised ever so slightly. Because again, you've got two um, pieces of cardstock folded in half, butted together, so it's taking up some of that space. You could leave, um, you could cut your cardstock a little bit shorter um, to avoid that if you'd like. But um, I like it. I think it looks good. Super cute, pretty easy to do, and I think that's fun to be able to slide that off um, and have that separate 
cute, right? All right. Oh, yeah, you just got your snail mail set. Yay, 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 yay. Good, good, good. All right, you guys want to see a, uh, a sneak peek of one of the cards that Glenda and I are doing? I didn't ask her if I could share these. Isn't that terrible of me? Let's see. I'm going to show. So this one right here. So of course, all the envelopes are going to have something on them, be it stamped or the envelopes decorated. I, this is one of my favorites. So it's got the cute mailbox with the letters. You know, my husband's a postman, so I had to do the mailbox. And then this is a fun fold that comes open and then you've got your inside. Cute, right? Do you want me to flash the others? I'll flash them, but I'm not gonna show you everything about them. Cause I don't, I don't wanna spoil the surprise. So an envelope and a card and it's a fun fold. Woo, can't see it. And then we've got this one, cute. And one more, and this one's a fun fold as well, but I'm not gonna open it and show you. Okay, so you saw a flash of all of them. <laughs> so hopefully you guys will sign up for the stamp camp or you know you can get it for free by joining my team. So they're gonna get the tutorial um, for free. Yay, awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, thank you guys so much for joining me today. And again, um, feel free to leave me a comment. I will come back and make sure I read all of them if you've got any questions. Give me some love, share it if you enjoyed the video. I very much appreciate it. Okay, and I will catch you all next Tuesday for some more paper crafting fun. Have a wonderful week. Bye for now.